Hello amazing people I am Ayushi Rawat and welcome to my channel Competitive programming like the name suggests it's a competition of coding where you have to solve a question using your logic based on maths algorithm and data structures you break the problem into small chunks and come up with a solution after analyzing the problem from different angles to minimize the time and space complexity so in this video tutorial i am going to tell you what is competitive coding so watch the video till the end I create content related to career, blogging, programming and productivity. If you are new to my channel, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. Press the bell icon to never miss an update every time I upload a video. So with that being said, let's quickly dive right into the video. Let's have a look at today's agenda. We'll walk through what is competitive programming, the factors in world, few tips and tricks and at the end I will share a few benefits with you. Programming is like a mental sport. It boosts your thinking skills. When you participate in a contest as a potential candidate for coding, it is called as competitive coding or competitive programming CP. Many participants are there from all over the world. Ultimately, everything boils down to time. Your ranking is based upon the time you consume to solve a question. There can be a couple of questions in world too. Say for example, let's have a look over a question to understand the basic approach and aspects of solving the problem. If you are not familiar with the platform, this is HackerRank. There are many other such platforms as well and sites where you can practice CP. We will discuss about this later in a separate video altogether where I'll explain you some tips and tricks and how you can use the platform effectively. So stay tuned. This is a very basic and easy question. The actual question will be way much harder than this one. Simple array sum. Let's have a look at the problem statement. Let's see what it says. Given an array of integers, find the sum of its element. All right. Let's have a look at the function description. Complete the simple array sum function in the editor below. It must return the sum of array elements as an integer. Then we have the input format and the output format along with some constraints. So the first line contains an integer n denoting the size of the array. The second line contains n space separated integers representing the array's element. Constraints n and the array elements is greater than 0 and less than equals to 1000. The output format print the sum of array's element as a single integer. Now here are some sample input and output given. So this is the size of the array, the input array. These are the elements of the array and this is the sample output which is the sum of the elements present inside the array. All right. So all we have to do is return the sum of elements of the array. So Python has an inbuilt function sum wherein I can use it to return the sum of the array. That's it. That's all I have to do. And now I can run my code. And now I can submit my code. And if you see, it has passed all the test cases given. This one right over here is a public test case and the other two are private test cases. If you are already into competitive programming, you must know how it feels to get this green text. When you finally solve a question that was bugging you from a very long time and you see this green text, the feeling is just amazing. This is a very basic and easy question. The actual questions will be way much harder than this one. Okay, so enough about the question. If you observe, the question has a problem statement, some basic explanation, input and output pattern, example of the sample input and output, some constraints, and a bunch of test cases. Some questions also contain a hint. CP is not language specific, so you can make use of any language of your choice. So if I scroll down this menu, you have C, C++, Go, Java, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Swift, and many other. So you have a bunch of languages to choose from. 
CP can be fun if you like challenges. Now that you have a basic idea of what CP is, let's have a look at the factors involved. So this is a scoreboard of a lead court's weekly contest, 235th weekly contest per se. And here's how a scoreboard looks like. Lead court is another CP platform where you can practice such questions. Here is a list of candidates who participated and their ranks and their ranks are dependent on certain factors. So there were four questions all together. The first question was of three marks, the second question of four, the fifth question had five marks and the last fourth question had six marks, which equals to 80. If you solve all the four questions, your score will be 80. This is the time taken by each candidate to solve the question. So the candidate 1 solved the first question within 46 seconds, the following one in 3 minutes 44 seconds and so on and the cumulative time is 11 minutes 22 seconds. If you observe the ranking is very uptight, say for example ranking 8 and 9. The difference here is only 5 seconds. The overall contest time is 1 hour 30 minutes, that's 90 minutes. So now let's have a look at all the factors that are involved like starting from how many questions were you able to solve, how much time you consume to come up with the relevant and the optimized answer, how much space you have consumed to solve the question, your execution time of the program, how many test cases your program passes. In most cases, you need to pass all the test cases to make sure your program is correct. Otherwise, your code will not be accepted. Let me open a previously solved lead code question. Let me show you an example. Let's navigate to the submission tab and open the accepted solution details. And here you can see there are 63 test cases of this particular question. You need to consider all the edge cases as well while coding, which is very important. Handling corner cases in order to pass all the test cases becomes a very important factor which you need to tackle. So here you can see a detailed graph of the accepted solutions runtime distribution. Another one is for the memory distribution. Like I said earlier, I will make a separate video for you guys explaining how you can use the platform effectively. One other important factor that many tend to overlook is the number of incorrect attempts. Let me once again open the scoreboard to explain this. So this little bug mark right here denotes an incorrect attempt. Likewise, this represents two incorrect attempts. So you need to ensure that you do not get incorrect attempts. This also counts. To reduce the number of incorrect attempts, you can run your own test cases on your local before actually submitting the code. It's best advice to practice questions from different topics and get a good hold of DS and Algo to score better in the actual competition. Before starting CP, you must be thorough with several DS concepts like Array, linked list, two pointers, binary search, divide and conquer, dynamic programming, DFS, BFS, graphs, BST, recursion, Q, sliding window, and many other. If you're unable to solve a question, start with a simpler one. Try looking from a different angle. CP is a journey. You cannot master it overnight. So if you get stuck, do not get disheartened. Try again. Come up with a brute force approach first. But if you solve a question, do not stop there. See how you can do it better to reduce the time and space complexities because that's what matters. Revisit the basic fundamentals of the programming language that you're using, maybe C, C++, Java, or any coding language will do. You will only get better by practicing. Practice as many questions as you can. And now comes the part you've all been waiting for. One of the biggest benefits of CP is that you can get through big companies interviews like Microsoft, Amazon, Google and many others. In order to clear the initial screening rounds, CP will be your best friend. The questions are ranked from easy, medium to hard. Many a times chances are that you see a familiar question. Obviously the exact question will not be the same but you will be able to get through the medium level ones. Key to crack hard questions? Practice. Practice, my dear friend. And with that, it's a wrap. That's all for this video, folks. 
I will soon create a part 2 of this video explaining roadmap and the complete guide to competitive programming and how you can start CP. I hope you found the video helpful. Please share it with your friends and connections who are interested in learning program. If you have reached so far, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any queries, feel free to reach out to me in the comments section. If you want me to make a video on a particular topic, you can drop your suggestions in the comment box. I will be back with more such videos. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you for watching.